For now, I'm going to talk to one of our paper presenters. Uh, so a PhD student who wrote in a paper is invited to present here, um, Parisa Narai from the Ryerson University in Canada. Um, so could you elaborate a little bit? Uh, you've explained to me it's about uh, machines or computers that are learning. We can use them in different uh, types. Um, future technology, so let's talk future. Yeah, of course. So first of all, thanks for having me. This has been a great experience for me so far. Uh, considering that I attended last yesterday and today has been amazing. So regarding my paper, we are applying uh, machine learning techniques, specifically neural networks and small vector machines, and we want to use that in classifications of healthcare data, like a heart disease data. And uh, we have found that this has been a great application. Like people are use can use that in healthcare, and it's going to really uh, uh, like uh, mm, uh, contribute to the decision making for neurosurgeons, for uh, medicines, and uh, healthcare in general. So definitely, we recommend people to to, to uh, you know uh, enjoy applying these techniques to their uh, yeah. specific medical uh, data sets because sometimes we feel like there is a gap between healthcare and applying the techniques, so they might think that it's not related, but we found that it's highly co re well, correlated. Where does so. the gap uh, come to existence? So where does it go wrong, am I to say? Because I know uh, health tech uh, is a very popular uh, phrase and uh, a lot of developments are going on, but still, like the implementation of health in, uh, uh, or of, uh, of tech in the health situation uh, it is only it's like a minimum uh, up to now. So what's holding them back? Actually, I think it's regarding our end users because at the end of the day, it's just the doctors who should be able to apply that. The, like the application should be so user friendly. Sometimes a couple of the applications comes from because it comes from uh, computer scientists, so they might forget that who will be the actual user of it. it it's so technical. it's too technical. Sometimes mm -hmm. people are say, telling us that it's not user friendly, or sometimes they're just so okay with their current techniques and they feel like they cannot trust the model because at the end of the day, you know, any, uh, any approach that you uh, uh, propose, it has a failure sometimes. So specifically in medical field, it's so important to keep the patient alive, right? So we don't want to, uh, you know, uh, take the risk and chance for any failure that might lead to a damage or, you know, death uh, for some patient. So that's one point and the most important point is that it sometimes it's not user friendly and it has to be very simple, very straightforward and very easy to use. And, th and then if we take it a next step to the future, could we say that this is only like an in-between phase where we're creating technique, uh, we're creating um, uh, systems that uh, assist a human, but then eventually in the future uh, I've already heard about some uh, examples in which the operation would be done by the robot, exactly. uh, assisted by a human. So exactly, that's very true. You know, uh, the feasibility study has shown that it is possible and sometimes it is still in progress and people are doing that. But you know, the, the best thing is when we have a combination of an expert who is using uh, these ki type of decision support tools, uh, just as a decision support tool, not like uh, we're not replacing uh, a human expert. Because at the end of the day, there might be something that comes from experience and because we're dealing with people's lives, so we definitely need someone, a human expert to supervise because at the end of the day, there might be a couple of metrics that has not been considered in your uh, application. There might be things that you were not aware and they are including that. So it's so important to have them both. I mean, yeah. from the point of technology, it's possible, but it's best, the best results come with a combination. Yes. I guess this is where uh, even future developments of AI and, and the connecting of all the knowledge. Uh, I've already read that it's possible to connect a lot of doctors. They're operating yeah. uh, with uh, brain scanners on okay. and we're collecting their knowledge. So uh, I guess the future is going to uh, show us just oh, how far it will go. It's exciting, right? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for just being with us shortly and elaborating on, that, uh, uh, on this theme, uh, Parisha.